What the hell are Brian Flores and Chris Greer doing? Rushing into the junk free agents market. Returning to the old Brissett, whom, in his words, could not be compared to Fitzpatrick. Longtime fans are saying that Dolphins entering the 2021 transfer season is probably the worst ever. Even, it is said that Dolphins is collecting rubbish at free agents 2021. Only Will Fuller is a rare light. While the main targets are the quality wide receivers, the big and seasoned tight ends have not yet been brought into sight by Flores. Why did the Flores not bring back the delicious JJ Watt? In less than two days, Flores married Isaiah Wilson and then pushed him out on the street again? All of the above doubts have made me think about a problem, you might laugh, but I think our Dolphins can be saved right now. And although to my understanding, I will explain some of the reasons for the above actions of Coach Flores, but, what I think right now, is to bring Dan Marino back, let him into the field, back, let him into the field. And if he can't throw the ball, let him run along the line, screaming and nudging the Dolphins. If you agree with me, press the like button. Enough. Let's go, Dolphins. NFL free agency is off and running, and we're keeping track of every major signing, trade and release of the 2021 offseason, with analysis from our NADFL reporters and grades from our experts. The new league year began March 17, meaning free agent signings could be made official after that. The first round of the 2021 NFL Draft begins April 29 on ESPN. The Miami Dolphins have active in free agency, signing 14 players in the first week, but unlike in 2020, those players were added primarily to fill important depth roles instead of core players on record-setting contracts. The biggest splash came late in the week when the Dolphins addressed their need for offensive playmakers, signing wide receiver Will Fuller V, who will be the starting speedy deep deep threat this offense has long needed. Miami has found temporary solutions at center, Matt Skura, and backup QB, Jacoby Brissett. The biggest need left is at edge rusher, a position the Dolphins have added depth, Vince Beagle, Brennan Scarlett, but lack a true difference maker to complement Emmanuel Ogba and Andrew Van Ginkle. Long-term solutions at edge, running back, center and wide receiver are top positions the Dolphins could target in the 2021 NFL Draft where they have four top 50 picks including the number three overall pick. Here's a breakdown of every 2021 NFL free agent signing by the Dolphins, and how each will impact the upcoming s First, the Brissett case. The Dolphins and the former Indianapolis Colts quarterback agree to terms on a one-year deal worth up to $7.5 million with incentives and $5 million guaranteed, a source told ESPN's Adam Schefter. What it means. The Dolphins have a new backup QB and a good one in Brissett, who has started 32 games in his five-year career. Tua Tungavailoa is the Dolphins' starter, something the team has reiterated multiple times this offseason, but Brissett provides significant value as a potential mentor for the young QB who can also win a game if something happens to Tungavailoa. Brissett can also be a short yardage and goal line runner, a role he filled with the Colts. With Ryan Fitzpatrick leaving to be the starter for the Washington football team, the Dolphins had to put resources into a strong backup QB. The risk here is, Brissett is getting good guaranteed money for the role, so the only risk is if he never sees the field and the money doesn't go to good use. One never knows good insurance will be needed. Fitzpatrick was perhaps the most beloved guy in Miami's locker room, so it's a tough task to fill his shoes, but early reviews are Brissett should be a good addition on and off the field. The reason why Flores chose Brissett is, Brissett, the West Palm Beach native and former Dwyer High football standout, is excited about staying home and playing quarterback for the Miami Dolphins. He'll reunite again with Dolphins coach Brian Flores after their short time together with the New England Patriots. And he'll compete with Dolphins starter Tua Tungavailoa, although it seems his role is already defined to be the Dolphins' backup. Flo just told me I'll get an opportunity to come play football again, Brissett said Thursday as several Dolphins newcomers spoke to local media for the first time since joining the team. I'm excited about that and excited about this opportunity to come out and compete, be a good teammate and go from there. Brissett comes to Miami after three seasons with the Indianapolis Colts, Polis Colts, where he was the team's starting quarterback in 2019, but benched in favor for Philip Rivers last season. Before joining Indianapolis, Brissett was a third-round pick by the Patriots and shared the quarterback room with Tom Brady and Jimmy Garoppolo. 
But his time in New England lasted only one season in 2016 while Flores was a defensive assistant. Now with the Dolphins, Brissett will back up and push Tungavailoa in training camp and practice next season. Brissett has not met Tungavailoa yet but has watched him from afar casually. I'll be the best teammate I can be, Brissett said of working with Tungavailoa. I can't be like anybody else. I can only be myself. I'm excited to see how we mesh together. I'm sure it'll all work out fine after everything I've heard about him. Brissett has played in 49 career games in the NFL with a 12-20 record in 32 starts. He has thrown for 6,459 yards with 31 touchdowns and 13 interceptions and a 59.6 career completion percentage. Brissett played two seasons at the University of Florida in 2011-12 before finishing his college career at NC State in 2014-15, but says playing high school football at Dwyer made me who I am today. I'm still getting better, and still learning and still growing, Brissett said. I'm excited for this new opportunity to go out there and do that. Second, Will Fuller. The Dolphins have made their biggest splash in free agency thus far by adding Fuller, who brings speed and big playability for an offense in need of both. He immediately slots in the starting lineup opposite Devontae Parker, providing a nice duo with differing skills. It was painful at times to watch Tua Tungavailoa throw to a depleted receiver group, and Miami made its biggest step yet in adding playmakers for him. This could go from one of the NFL's slowest offenses to an explosive one if the fuller move is coupled with drafting another top-end receiver like Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase or Jalen Waddle. The Dolphins and quarterback Tua Tungavailoa desperately need offensive playmakers who can threaten defenses with speed, separation and ability to create yards after catch. Enter Fuller, who has been one of the NFL's best deep threats throughout his NFL career. He should stretch defenses in a way Miami couldn't in 2020. Fuller set career highs in 11 games for 879 yards and 8 touchdowns. Tunga Vailoa, meanwhile, only attempted two passes with more than 50 yards of air distance last season, and his longest completion in 2020 resulted in a 35-yard gain, according to ESPN stats and information. Fuller had six receptions longer than that last season. He joins a Dolphins receiving room that includes receiver Devontae Parker and tight end Mike Jasicki. Miami also could add a top receiving option, such as Devonta Smith, Jamar Chase, Kyle Pitts or Jalen Waddell, through the draft. In five NFL seasons, Fuller has played in 53 of 80 games, only once playing more than 11 games in a season. But when he was on the field, he was a difference maker for Houston averaging 58.7 yards per game with 209 receptions for 3,110 yards and 24 touchdowns in his career there. But, the biggest risk here is, injuries. Fuller playing but, the biggest risk here is, injuries. Fuller playing just 53 of 80 games a pro, and he's only played more than 11 games in a year once in his five seasons. The Dolphins already have two other top receivers who have bouts with injuries, Parker and Preston Williams, so it's a risk to bet on them to stay healthy. Partly because of those injuries, Fuller hasn't had an 1,000-yard season. The risk with Fuller is mitigated somewhat by it being just a one-year deal. The second worry is that Fuller was suspended in 2020 for violating the NFL's policy on performance-enhancing substances, and he'll have to serve the final game of that suspension in Week 1. He has to prove that was a one-time mistake. His skills and potential are third. O.T. Isaiah Wilson. The Miami Dolphins waived 2021st round offensive tackle Isaiah Wilson on Saturday, just days after acquiring him in a trade with the Tennessee Titans. Wilson was hours late for his physical and team onboarding process, skipped multiple optional workouts that he agreed to attend on Thursday and Friday and declined support service help that he was offered, all in his first official week with the team, sources said. Miami was aiming to take a low-risk flyer on Wilson, who was acquired with a 2022 seventh-round pick in exchange for a 2021 seventh-round pick on a deal that was agreed to on March 8, but finalized earlier this week. His guarantees were voided due to his suspension with the Titans, so he's owed no money, and the loss to Miami is receiving a seventh-round pick one year later. Coach Brian Flores has known Wilson, a Brooklyn native who went to the same high school, for years. 
The team hoped that Connection plus others on the team would help give Wilson a skin chance to reach his on-field potential and manage his off-the-field troubles after a disastrous year in Tennessee. But just days into his time in Miami, Wilson continued to show what a source called a concerning track record that made it clear to the team it was time to move on. Wilson also posted social media videos of him Friday dancing shirtless on top of a car and smoking a vape, the same day he agreed to do a workout. By then, the Dolphins had already decided to move on as Wilson was not receptive of their plans to help him. Tennessee signed Wilson, the 29th selection in last April's NFL draft, to a four-year, $11.6 million contract in August. He was considered a top 50 prospect by many draft analysts and a potential long-term starting right tackle. But Wilson's time with the Titans didn't get off to a good start, prompting the team to move on from him less than a year later. The right tackle out of the University of Georgia played only four snaps in his rookie season, in his being placed on the non-football injury list in December. Before that, Wilson found himself on the reserve COVID-19 list twice, during training camp and in October. He also had a couple of run-ins with the law. The first came when Tennessee State Police broke up an off-campus party Wilson had attended during training camp. In their report, the police documented that Wilson went to the second-floor balcony, where he appeared to briefly consider jumping. He received a trespass warning. The second incident occurred when Wilson was arrested and charged with a DUI in September when he lost control of his vehicle and struck a concrete wall. Titans general manager John Robinson addressed Wilson's status during a virtual news conference last month, telling reporters he had not spoken to Wilson since putting him on the non-football injury list and suggesting that Wilson makes a determination on whether he wants to do what it takes to play pro football.